Hi and welcome to this video where I want to show you two things. First is my self-coded VST plugin LR Stereo Width which allows you to adjust the stereo width of a stereo track from mono to extreme stereo. And the second is a free user plugin called Relearn by Helgo Boss which allows you to record automation data on the fly by using a MIDI controller. And it also allows you to control the parameters of a plugin by twisting the knobs of your MIDI controller. I've got a song here which has a fairly reduced stereo width and I want to expand that stereo width to have it sound more spacious. This is what it sounds like originally. As you can see on the stereoscope, the stereo width is quite narrow and I will now load my VST plugin to see if there's potential to expand the stereo width. As always, if you are dealing with expanding stereo width, you have to be careful to not overdo it in order to avoid phase correlation issues. As you can see, the plugin offers only one slider, making it very easy to use. Default position of the slider is the original stereo width, and you can change that width until you have either perfect mono, thus zero stereo width, or all the way up to 200%, which means in fact that you have a pure side signal because internally this plugin works with MS stereo and what you're doing if you're pulling the slider towards the 200% is reducing the level of the M channel, of the mid channel of the MS signal. So in fact the sides take over and uh, you get the impression of having an enlarged stereo field. However, be aware that pulling the fader up to 200% will lead to the signal cancelling out completely when listened back in mono mode. So avoid going over something like 170%. Beyond that point you will only get serious phase issues with your signal. Now let's check out what this plugin sounds like when we increase or decrease the original stereo width with it. At this point the stereo width is nicely enlarged and creates significantly more space. However, further increasing stereo width leads to a pure S signal which will cancel out in mono mode. So I'd recommend to avoid that setting. 170% seems to be a practical value where the original sound will not suffer when monitored in mono. However, the mix has gained a lot of space and that is exactly what we wanted. Just make sure that the correlation meter always remains between 0 and 1. This will ensure that your signal will remain mono compatible and without any audible phase issues. Okay, this was the introduction of my stereo width plugin. Now let's talk a little bit about the very interesting Relearn plugin. To use it, I'm switching my console to operate in MIDI remote control mode. The Relearn plugin will enable us to write automation data on the fly and also to remote control desired plugin parameters. So I'll be loading Relearn into the input effects of a track. In fact, it doesn't matter which track I choose to put Relearn on. 
the version I have regularly crashes on load, but it still works afterwards. Once the plugin is loaded, we have to determine what controller we will be using. In my case, I'll be using the faders of a Yamaha DM1000 mixing console. So first thing to do is selecting this device as the MIDI controller input. Next we will be creating a new mapping. So I click on Add Mapping. And then on Edit to specify the parameters of the mapping. I will be assigning fader number 10 of the DM1000 as the source of the controller data simply by clicking on Learn on the source side and then simply moving that fader. Relearn has recognized my movement and registered all necessary parameters. So I'll be now assigning the target parameter for the controller by clicking on the Learn button on the target side and then simply touching the desired parameter with the mouse. I've successfully assigned my console's fader 10 to serve as a remote controller for the stereo width plugin. Okay, so let's listen again to the track and I'll be fiddling around with the stereo width. I'm gonna start by setting it to zero stereo width, thus mono. Note that in this setup I didn't specify a feedback connection to my console, so moving the parameter of the plugin will not make the console's fader move. Okay, now let's move on and use Relearn to automate incoming controller data directly into an automation envelope. Let's enable an automation lane for the stereo width parameter and then set the automation mode of that track to touch. I'll be now writing an envelope for the stereo width parameter with the console's fader. Moving the fader immediately changes the automation envelope. Let's start playback and fiddle around a bit. Let's change the track automation to read mode to play back what I just recorded. But we won't see the console's fader move along.
Okay, last thing I want to mention is that you can easily add any number of further controller mappings to the list. Simply click on Add Mapping and then on Edit and there you can assign another source controller parameter and link it to a desired target parameter. If you're interested in using ReLearn, I have put the link to its web page into the info section below the video, as well as the link to the collection of my self-coded free VST plugins for Reaper. Please note that these plugins will only work on Windows computers. I hope you found this video useful and hope you'll be back next time. Bye bye!